Hey guys, it's Ben. I need to preface this video because I shot it all and then I got some information from the manufacturer that was different than what I thought it was. So this video is about a 15 watt OTOR laser and they market it as a 15 watt, especially on Amazon and Banggood. However, it is not a 15 watt laser. So what they emailed me was the OTOR Laser Master 15 watt. The 15 watt is the electrical power and the luminous power, which is actually what the laser is cutting at, is about 4.5. So that is some misinformation, and I need to clear that up. It is a 4.5 watt laser. That's about what I have for my Shapoko. The JTEC is a 4.2, so they are really comparable. Uh, some other things they threw down in the email is that there's an active position protection. There's a G sensor on the motherboard that if there's unauthorized movement, it'll stop the machine altogether. There is a laser beam safety guard. If your computer system halts it or USB cable disconnected, LED to that laser engraving stops moving and the laser beam will not fire. And then there is one last thing, the exposure duration uh, detection and limitation. If the laser engraver under control, but user forgets to operate and keep the laser beam working, Extra safety will cut off the laser from moving and preventing fire. So I just wanted to preference that video. So here is the rest of the information. And remember, if I say anything about 15 watt in here, it's the overall power and the laser is actually only cutting at 4.5 watts. Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop. Hi, this is Peter Romano with RowdyRoman.com. And we are going to open up this 15 watt Orter laser that got sent to try out. It is a desktop laser and we're going to see how it compares to all my other lasers. So Pete's going to open it up and we're going to show it off. We have the Y-axis assembly. We have the X-axis assembly. We have the power adapter. We have a USB cable right here. Then here is that 15 watt laser. We have test uh, wood slices as well as like a, a MDF type thing. Acrylic. That's an acrylic thing. Oh, or <laughs> acrylic. We have uh, some zip ties. I do not know why we have a dry erase marker or a paintbrush. And then tools and some bolts. So wow, this was super easy to put together. There were some minor difficulties, uh, like right here, I did not use the washer because there just was not enough bolt and threads for everything to grab. And then the only other thing that we had problems with was there was play in the, the X-axis uh, belt. So what we did is we just tightened it up ourselves. We trimmed off a little bit of the belt and that stopped any kind of play this way, uh, going on that X axis. Uh, so other, only other thing is I saw in here is they do have a program that you can download through Dropbox, but with Myers Woodshop and his JTEC laser on the CNC, as well as his large uh, Chinese laser, light burn is the way to go it's forty dollars a lifetime subscription super easy to use american made it's tested and that's what we're going to use with this thing as well uh, the instruction manual was super easy to follow uh, it was not hard at all it did come with this page right here is a reference page and we will test a bunch of these out so to see if they're actually accurate and see if they will work with the materials that are shown here Okay guys, so we got it up and running. 
Some things that you guys need to know is there are a reset button over here and then there's the power button there. They can be a little bit finicky, but uh, we had to reset the machine quite a bit. Getting it to work with light burn took a little bit of time, but I think it's going to be worth uh, your time to set it up with light burn as well. For all of the settings that you guys are wanting to use and need for light burn, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, and it'll be linked to a blog post that I'll have on my website talking about all of the settings that you need to know and getting you set up so that you can print a lot faster than fumbling through yourself. Uh, something else that you guys need to know is there are only two screws holding the, uh, the laser to this. Most likely what I'm probably going to do is print a, a 3D object to fit in here as a spacer so that this laser is level this way. And then with the two screws, you can always laser the level this way. So that's something that you guys could uh, do as well. And I'll, I'll probably post uh, whatever I print when I get to that uh, on my website as well. All right, so next up is I will load up my logo up on Lightburn and I will show you how it cuts. Is it recording? Yeah, it's been recording this whole time. It looks cooler on the screen because it looks like it's blasting laser out oh, cool. and exploding than just a dot. I am super impressed. Holy crap. Dude, that is tiny letters. We should have grouped it together. Yeah. The grouping and stuff, this is where it would have mattered. Oh, it's going over that again. It's a double line on the SVG. If you zoomed in, there's two right next to each other. Hmm. How long did it say? 222. It's going to be close. I think it's going to beat it. All right, so this is what it looks like coming out. It produced really clean lines. We were a little bit shy of what the estimation was, which is nice, it's faster than what it's estimating. Um, you can't feel that it's engraved really into it. So cutting is still gonna take forever. Cutting, you're not cutting an eighth inch piece of wood. Um, so, but that is engraving on a piece of Baltic birch. All right guys, we are going to attempt to cut. I'm going to be cutting at 100% at only 10 millimeters per second. Very slow, we just engraved the other one at 6,000 millimeters per second, so we may start a fire. So let's see. Here we go. No fire, but definitely darker. This is real time. So if you're in an enclosed area like this and you're going slow, you do want to get some sort of a filtration because you will smell like it's smoking. And it looks just like this. And my fingernail 
definitely fits in it in the groove and still that was one pass and you're maybe down a half a millimeter so this is three millimeters so it's going to take a significant amount of time to cut through. So that is slow testing. Yeah, this was this was actually at 750 millimeters per oh, second. Oh, 750. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Whoa! Line. Did you see the whole thing moved? Did it? When it was going that freaking fast. So you're gonna have to install those things. And... All right, so our lasering on acrylic, we were too fast and it barely went through that paper. So we need to slow it down a whole lot, but I will do acrylic. That's hard to capture on the camera here. Get a reflection. You can see it right there. You need to slow it down. So, all right, guys. So that's where our tests are going to end for this video. We got it together, put together, cut some stuff. Works really well. Engraving. Yeah. Engraving is spot on. Really good. Obviously, we haven't had enough time to dial in the settings. And if we ever do, I'll update my blog post with that, along with all of the light burn settings. Light burn settings, we know we're good on that. But any of the uh, dialed in settings for all the wood over time, as Pete uses it. We'll get in the settings and I'll update the blog so you'll know exactly what it is. Uh, what was this? How much is this? So yeah, this is $175.99 and we got it together pretty quick and started using it. Yeah. Was it Banggood or Gearbest? Gearbest. Gearbest, $179. I'll leave links in the description below to find this. I'm pretty sure Amazon and all the other ones have it, but I'll leave links down below. Uh, I am really impressed with this thing. Mm -hmm. I have had, obviously it's not as good as the big CO2 laser. Nothing will yep. come close to that. Um, but engraving, if you're engraving, this works really well. It is really light. Mm -hmm. I mean, one handed, I can move it around. The other thing was you have to get your speeds right for your X and your Y movement because it, because it's so light, it moves around. So they did, it did come with these. Didn't come any with any other hardware like screws or anything. You could put it on there, but that also means that you could situate this to where you could mount this thing on a wall. Literally and, could do it this way with yep. these little L brackets. Mount it on a wall and laser on a wall. That's pretty awesome. Or a awesome. door or something. I mean, yeah. super cool. Any degree you want to, to do it on, it would work. Yep. So if you're doing tabletops or something, like my big laser has a pass-through where you can fit pieces of wood through. But if a table is already made and you yeah. want to put somebody's name on it or mm -hmm. something, I, big laser is useless. Yep. Uh, also with my Shapoko, the CNC I have with the laser attachment equally is useless. Mm -hmm. um, but this thing, man, you could just porter, portable it, portable it. Port <laughs> you could just take this thing over to a friend's house and be yeah. like, all right, I'm going to set it on your table. Boom. I lasered your name or an engraver or something, yeah. which is so cool. It's Really, a, it's portable. It's a nice tool to have in my arsenal, yep. and there will be times where I'm like, "Hey, I need to borrow your laser because yeah. my big ones cannot do the job." Yep. So uh, we did run into a little bit of a reset issue mm -hmm. with Lightburn. At least, if you do too many commands too fast, like moving it really fast, it overloads it, and we have to reset it, which is a simple click of a button. Mm -hmm. It resets it, start over, and you just don't send a billion commands through the garble. Uh, information because it just it can't handle that it's a slower processor board pretty much yep so the only other thing I think I, I would do to it and I'm gonna look into it is just adding uh, a camera to it so you can align stuff because there's really no uh, fence to align stuff and make things square if you add that camera uh, you could just line stuff up pretty quick Lightburn has that functionality built in you can buy a, any web-based cam or they even sell some i have uh, other videos you can find it right here on setting that up 
where it'll overlook over here. It'll overlay that onto your screen so you can pinpoint, mm -hmm. I mean, within less than millimeters of exactly where it's gonna cut. Yep. I, I will not use a laser without a camera anymore. It's just way too convenient. Yep. So adding that, he will probably have to create his own file with a 3D printed arm or something. Mm -hmm. And if he does get that, we will put that on your Etsy page. Sure. And if you need it, you can grab it from his Etsy page, yep. either the file or the camera itself, the holder itself, and then you'll be hooked up. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. It's, it, I, I would buy it. Yeah, I would. I would buy it. Yep, for $175. I did not buy it. The creator mm -hmm. of this sent it to me, but now that I've used it and had it, I would totally buy it. Absolutely. It's absolutely a buy. Yep. So my name's Peter uh, from RowdyRoman.com. And I'm Ben with Myers Woodshop. Thanks for watching. Happy cutting. I don't even know what brand this is. Uh, Orther? Or Orter. Ort Orter. O R T U R. Orter. We'll say Orter. Orter. Orter? Orter. Okay. Orter. Okay. Orter. <laughs>